Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The story that I am going to read to you today is Jack and the Beanstalk. Let's start. Jack and his mother lived all alone in a little cottage in a valley ringed by mountains. They were poor, so poor that their cupboards were bare and they had no money to buy food. We'll starve soon, said Jack's mother, and we have nothing left to sell except the cow. You'll have to take Milky White to market, Jack, and mind you get the best price you can for her. Jack tied a rope around the cow's neck and led her away. He hadn't gone far when he met an old man with bright eyes and a bushy beard. Stop there, boy, said the old man. I'll give you five magic beans for your cow. Oh no, said Jack. Mother wants me to sell her at the market. We need money, not beans. Aha, said the old man. But who knows what these beans will bring? They're magic, you know. They could bring you fortune, adventure and treasure. Jack's eyes grew round in wonder. It's a deal, he cried. He handed over Milky White, snatched up the beans and raced home, proud with what he had done. Goodbye, old man. When he showed his mother the beans, she was horrified. I've wanted gold coins, not old beans, she fumed. Jack, Jack, what were you thinking? How are we going to buy food now? But they're magic beans, said Jack. At least the old man said they were magic. How could you, the mother said. You have been tricked, you fool, said his mother. And she took the bag and threw it out of the window, beans and all. That night, Jack went to bed on an empty, grumbling stomach. I have ruined everything, he sighed. Milky White is gone. So we don't even have any milk. And all I got for her were some rotten beans. How was I foolish enough to believe that old man? There's no such thing as magic. But the next morning, Jack opened his window to see a twisting, turning, living, magical beanstalk. The beans were magic after all, Jack cried. Looking up, he could see the beanstalk spiral its way above the clouds. And he couldn't resist. Here was an adventure before his very eyes. He reached out, grabbed hold of a branch and began to climb. Up, up, up he went, until his cottage was no more than a tiny dot in the distance. He climbed past soaring birds and through the airy blue, until he reached the topmost tip of the beanstalk. And there at the beanstalk's end stood a castle in the clouds. And on the doorstep of that castle, a giantess. What have we here? asked the giantess, picking up Jack as if he were no heavier than a feather. A little human boy, I see, she said, her eyes as large and round as twin moons. Well, it's not safe for you here. My husband has a taste for human flesh. He'll munch you and crunch you in a moment, a little scrap of a thing like you. Oh, please, said Jack, I'm so very, very hungry and I won't be any trouble. Couldn't you give me just the tiniest of snacks and I'll be gone? I promise. I haven't had a meal for days and I've climbed all this way. Very well, said the giantess. But whatever you do, don't you let my husband catch you. And she carried him through to the kitchen. Hmm, how delicious. Jack feasted on a breadcrumbs bigger than his body and mounds of cheese as high as houses. He was just congratulating himself on his adventure when all of a sudden, thump, 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 the castle walls trembled and the great booming voice thundered down the hallway. Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Quick, gasped the giantess, that's my husband come back for his lunch. Hide in here, she whispered and dropped Jack into a sugar jar. And not a peep or a squeak out of you. The giant sniffed the air. What's this I smell? Is it boy? Oh no, said his wife. No boys here. If you smell anything at all, it must be the remains of that boy you had for breakfast. Hmm, said the giant. Then bring me my lunch. I am hungry enough to eat horse. His wife hurried away and returned with the tray. All this time, Jack stayed as still as he could in the sugar jar, hardly daring to breathe. After the giant had gobbled his lunch, he sat back in his chair and called out, Wife, bring me my hen. 
the one that lays the golden eggs. His wife brought him the hen, and this time curiosity got the better of Jack. He lifted up the lid and peered out of the jar. Sure enough, there was a hen, and plop, out come a real golden egg. The giant sighed with satisfaction, then sank back into his chair once more. Soon he was fast asleep, with snores that shook the castle walls. Now's your chance, said the giant's wife, scooping Jack out of the sugar jar. Be off with you, my dear, and if you value your life, don't you ever come back again. Jack took off like a spring here. In one bound, he was down from the table and across the floor. But then he thought of this poor mother, cold and hungry at home, and of that fat clucking hen laying eggs of pure gold he couldn't resist. He turned, picked up the hen, and made a dash for the door. Squack! cried the hen. Squack! Squack! The giant woke. What's going on? he cried. Hey! he added, spotting Jack beetling across the floor. There's a boy and he's stealing my hen. How dare he? I'm going to catch him and gobble him up. Come back, boy. Come back now. Jack did not stop, not for a second. He sped down the beanstalk, his feet fumbling for their holes, slipping and sliding down the treacherous trunk. And above him came the giant, making the beanstalk bend and sway. Mother called Jack, bring the axes, please bring the axes. His only hope was to make it down before the giant. I'll get you yet, boy, yelled the giant, making a grab for Jack. But Jack twisted from his grasp. He tumbled down the last part and landed in a heap on the ground, still clutching the squacking hen. We've got to chop down the beanstalk, cried Jack, before the giant makes it down. Jack and his mother hacked away as hard as they could. And with each swift, hard stroke, the blades of the axes bit through the beanstalk, making it wobble first this way and then that. Stop that, boomed the giant. Stop that, I say. With one final stroke, Jack sliced through the stalk. The giant yelled as he fell through the air. Down, down and down he came, hitting the ground with such force, Jack knew he would never be troubling them again. Life after that was much less adventurous for Jack. The beanstalk to the castle in the clouds was gone. As for the golden eggs, they bought Jack and his mother a new home and food enough to last a lifetime. But sometimes he couldn't help wishing for just one more magic bean. The end. If you like the story and if you want to read more books with us, subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you.